Before we begin, we are so close to a million subscribers. If you haven't hit the button, you could be the one to push us over the edge. Fun video today about some Battlefront 2 controversy I was not expecting, but let's roll the intro. Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. So we are once again talking the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. And for those of you who have missed the news, next month, Aspire will be releasing on Xbox, PC, and PlayStation a pack of the two original Star Wars Battlefront games with some small adjustments. Now, I think news of this has been overwhelmingly positive. However, there are a couple of things worth talking about and one hopefully oversight that could actually end up being a pretty big deal and that strangely enough has to do with the use of modded content in the official release but let's talk about the little things first so overall i'd say there are really just two minor complaints about the star wars battlefront classic collection that i've seen so far and the first has to do with size the two original battlefront games how much would you expect them to take from your computer's hard drive just think about it for a second for context i have both the original steam versions battlefront 1 2000 was 2.8 gigabytes, Battlefront 2 from 2005, 9.59 gigabytes. Well, the re-release now apparently is clocking in at 50 gigabytes, so that's almost a five times increase in total space needed. What's the source of this? Well, as you'll probably guess, new textures. My friend Azatru, a Star Wars Battlefront YouTuber, did a really good breakdown of this on his channel, which I'll link down below, but there's also evidence that the basic textures have been upscaled with AI, so not only is the size now greater, but this can lead to visually inconsistent results. For me personally, I don't really mind. Some people, this really bothers, not because of the ethics of AI or anything like that, just because from a visual standpoint, it's not really a true representation of the original game. You can let me know how you feel about that down below. I think the other, aside from the use of potentially modded content, which again, I'll get to, has to do with price. This game is 35 US dollars, which is quite expensive. The original Original games on Steam will often drop down to like $5 or less each. I wonder whether they'll eventually be taken off Steam once this launches. But the fact of the matter is, this is a pretty low effort bundle. To me, I don't mind the price, but I understand why it really bothers people. There's essentially no new content here. It's not a remaster, it's a collection. The AI upscaling is one of the only changes. I don't know, a price like $20 to me would have been more in line with the amount of effort being put in here. This isn't something like Dark Forces where the game is very difficult to get running on PC. I did a playthrough, as I mentioned, of Battlefront and Battlefront 2 on my channel a few years ago, and yeah, you gotta mess with the settings a little bit to get the resolution right. Some of the borderless widescreen doesn't play that nicely, but those are fairly small issues which you could fix yourself given a few minutes. So there are people frustrated by that, especially because this does have the potential to mess up the player base somewhat. Is everyone who played the PC versions going to come to this new bundle? I'm I'm almost positive there won't be compatibility between the two games and I also think it was a mistake for them not to try to get cross-platform multiplayer working. There is cross-generation multiplayer on the PlayStation but if they could get everybody playing together I just feel like that would help keep the game's population healthy going into the future. I also hope this provides a good base for mod support and my dream going into the future is that if this is successful which I very much assume it will be that they consider porting elements from the two PSP exclusive games, Renegade Squadron and Elite Squadron, over to Steam. I had a PSP. I didn't even get those games. Not many people did, and they essentially reflect one version of what Star Wars Battlefront 3 would have been, so let's get that content to more players. I think that'd be really cool. You could even release it as, like, a DLC to this game, or extra content. I know that'd be more work than just a straight bundle, but I think it would go pretty far to build confidence in Aspire, who, by the way, are fully in bed with Star Wars, and I do think it would make money as well. All right, but that takes us to the main topic of today's video, and I've got to give a shout out to Majora Z on Twitter, who sent this to me. And a bit of context, the original Star Wars Battlefront 2 had exclusive Xbox DLC. One of the selling points of this bundle is that all DLC will be available on all platforms. Before the re-release, however, the Steam versions of Star Wars Battlefront 2 had a mod, a popular mod, created by I am a 
Shaman, who inserted the characters of Asajj Ventress, Kit Fisto, in the maps Bespin Cloud City, Renvar Harbor, Renvar Citadel, and Yavinvor Arena into the PC version. By the way, all of that content was released in 2006 for $4.99, so that's pretty good. There were some other changes too, like which maps you could play Assault on, but as I mentioned, these were locked to the Xbox. Modders worked to get this content to PC. It's my understanding that at one point, they created Asajj and Kit by basically putting their skins over existing characters and their animations. However, at one point, Pandemic staff actually gave the community the files, so the content was ported pretty much as it existed on Xbox to PC. The problem is, based on the trailer which was released, Aspire has actually used this mod to restore the content, but not the mod as it existed in its final up-to-date form. I'm just going to read from some of the Steam discussions. I am the author of the Xbox DLC content PC mod for Battlefront 2. The trailer shows Asajj wielding two lightsabers like Ayla, something I did for my mod a few years ago due to a complication with the animations. Same with Kit Fisto, who is clearly using Kiedi Mundi's animations like in my mod. I fixed this recently, so my heroes use the official pandemic animations. Aspire has not. There were a couple things I had to create custom, like Asajj's lightsabers and Kit Fisto's force bubbles that I'm expecting to appear. And he points out that, yeah, Asajj's sabers are his creation, which is a tell that they're using his work, not the official work. Now, the mod author is not taking issue with the fact that they took his work. Me personally, I think that's, I mean, a little bit scummy at the very least. Throw the dude some credit in the game credits or some money. But legally, they don't have to do that because when you make something with the mod tools, it's the property of Lucasfilm. And the modder by his own accounts is, and I quote, flattered and overjoyed that something he created was even shown in something official Star Wars. The problem is that the old version of the mod is just not as good. It doesn't have the official content as it appeared on Xbox back in the day. And from my understanding, it means that the heroes in the mod will play more like reskins than the actual content. Now, it's very possible that this trailer wasn't necessarily reflective of what the final game will look like or what content will be in the game. The good thing is, even if they want to use the mods instead of, instead of porting the content over by itself, there's actually a, as mentioned, revised accurate version of the content as a mod available to download freely on ModDB. But it's very possible that this was made early on in development or it was outsourced to another company and what was in the trailer was not reflective of what the final game will be. Hopefully that's the case. I gotta say, I actually had the game on Xbox and I'd never played with Asajj back in the day because I didn't have Xbox Live. I don't know if you could buy the content on disc, but I don't think so. Either way, the mod creator has reached out to Aspire and I gotta say, when it comes to remastering or rebundling these games, which have been in the hands of the community for a long time, I'm actually cool with companies working with community members who have lovingly, over decades in some cases, helped bring the game to a better place. I mean, ideally they ask and they work collaboratively because the way it is now, this does end up feeling a bit like this is a cash grab. They want to do as little effort as possible, but there's a way this could have been cool if you took all of the tools the community made, the ones that don't obviously drastically go away from the game's original vision, and you make like an ultimate version which can be played out of the box by all fans, that's pretty cool. This is just my thoughts on the whole situation though. I'll link to the Steam discussion as well down in the description so you can follow along there if there are any updates, but that's all I've got for you guys. Till next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.